Hey y'all, it's Kim Hosey here. Thanks for joining us for today's Shiloh shout out. I'm standing in our prehistoric Ozarkers exhibit, which discusses the first people in the Arkansas Ozarks. So how do we learn about people who lived a long time ago if they aren't around anymore to tell us their stories? Well, we study the items they left behind and the places they used to live in. This is why archeology, span the study of people based off of what they leave behind is so important. So for today's Shiloh shout out, we will be joined by Dr. Mel Zabecki from the Arkansas Archaeological Survey. The Arkansas Archaeological Survey is a part of the University of Arkansas system and has been around for over 50 years. The survey's mission is to preserve and learn about Arkansas's past, preserve and manage information found at archaeological sites around the state, and to share that information with the people of Arkansas. So Dr. Zabecki will be discussing different tools and items found at different archaeological sites around Arkansas and what they were used for many years ago. Hey everybody, Mel here to give you a quick archaeology lesson. Did you know that archaeologists are anthropologists by trade? We actually study people. We study their culture. We study the cultures that they leave behind. And so that means we have nothing to do with dinosaurs and we have nothing to do with fossils because people have not been around that long. So we just study what we call the recent past, which is about 15,000 years in Arkansas. And so there have been people here for 15,000 years. And what we do is we study the 15,000 years worth of culture. And one of the evidences of culture is artifacts. And so I'm going to show you some artifacts today that we find in Arkansas and that you may have found yourself. So first of all, the main artifacts that we find most often are stone tools. And that's because stone lasts a long time in the ground. And for 15,000 years, people have been dropping stone tools on the ground. And so we've got lots of them and lots of different kinds. So the one that you're probably most familiar with is not an arrowhead, not an arrowhead, not an arrowhead. Most people call these arrowheads, but they're actually called spear points. And the reason being is because spear points are kind of big. Arrowheads are very teeny tiny. So you can see the difference. And the reason being is because an arrowhead needs to be very small so that it can fly when shot through a bow. And so we've got a replica arrowhead here connected to its shaft with the feather fletching. And then the spear point would look something like this, attached to a, a shaft that would go on to the main spear. Now, these are great and these are cool, but there are tons of other kinds of stone tools that the American Indians used in the past for all different kinds of things. We've got hammer stones to beat on stuff. Nowadays, our hammers are made out of metal. Back then, they were using stones. We have real basic artifacts like flakes that had sharp edges that you can cut any array of things. It doesn't have to be a fancy knife. We've got scrapers, which are shaped a little bit better, but they still don't have to be connected to anything because you use it with your hand to scrape hide uh, to get the fur off for leather and strapping and stuff like that. We also have the world's first nutcracker. I know it just looks like a plain old rock, but there's a little indentation here. And that indentation was from someone taking a hammerstone, putting a nut on there. Uh, American Indians in, in Arkansas ate pecans and walnuts and hickory nuts and all kinds of and acorns. And so you would take the hammerstone and knock it onto here and break the nut. And over time, there would be an indentation created. So this is an artifact, stone tool, nutcracker. Then you get into your fancier things. You got your knives. They would have either been put on hafted to, which means connected to either maybe antler handles or wooden handles. And they could be, of course, used for any array of things that we use knives for today. And then some larger tools. This is a really big one and it's called a stone hoe. And it would have been connected to my replica here um, to a big wooden handle and this would have been used as a farming implement so when farming was finally adopted we've got farming implements but we also had to fell those trees right when we had uh clear the land for for farms so we have celts that was basically like an axe right and then we also have adzes which are woodworking tools that were connected uh instead of like an axe this way they'd be connected this way onto the handle and you can make things like dugout canoes and, and break wood apart this way. So there's tons of kinds of tools. There's one other one that's my very, very favorite. It kind of looks like an arrowhead, but it's much, much longer at its base. And basically what that is, is a stone drill. And so how it works is that it would have been connected to a wooden shaft and the wooden shaft would have had something called a spindle whirl, a round thing there, connected near the bottom. And then there would have been a piece of leather strapping and a handle that would spin around 
And when you wind it up, kind of like a top, you would, with just the right amount of pressure, push down on it, and the spindle whirl would create centrifugal force and let the thing run on its own. And what they did with these things is drill holes in wood, they would drill holes in shell for ornaments, all kinds of things. So there was an amazing array of stone tools. And you probably have seen a lot of these things. Sometimes you might see something and not even know it was a tool at all. But if you find something, I suggest that you take a picture of it and brag to all of your friends that you found it. But please do me a huge favor. Leave it where you found it. Do the leave no trace thing that this, the Forest Service asks us to do. Leave nothing but footprints. Take nothing but pictures. Take some pictures and that's all. Because you know what? In 100 or 200 years, I guarantee that spot that you found that thing is going to have a Walmart or a Dollar General or some other store on top of it. So leave it where you found it for future archaeologists to tell the story of ancient Arkansas. And that's all. Take care.